Okay, got it. Let me just yeah. close this window. Hello, hello. All right, I don't know if anyone's joining live or later. I'm not gonna look at that. I'm just gonna look at you and say, thank you for joining me. Thanks for having me. I haven't seen you since when? When did we wrap up? That's a good question. When did, I'm trying to remember when my round When ended. did we start? I know, it started October, November, December, yeah. January, for March. March -ish? Yeah. yeah, March of this year. Yeah. Wow, oh oh, time is tripping me out. I know. <laughs> like legitimately. Um, okay, so for anybody watching, Lauren, should I call you Lauren or Elsie? Either one. What are we yeah. doing today? <laughs> Whatever. Okay, I go well, by like, both. Yeah. Okay, it says Lauren on your thing, so I'm not to confuse It does, both. yeah. Um, yeah, Lauren was in the fall round of School of Love's Inner Circle, so we started October 2021 in the group of women calling in love. Like, you know, I might even have to change that. It's like, it's such a journey of connecting within and then putting out the desires of what you want. Mm -hmm. Okay, if we like just rewind mm -hmm. and you and I spoke probably in September or something of 20. Oh, like a year ago, yeah. Yeah, oh my God. Not funny. Like, can you take, are you able to take yourself back there and actually like come back to why you even like filled out the form and wanted to get, like, we're curious about School of Love's Inner Circle and like, what, what was the intention? What was the draw? Yeah. So I was trying to remember. I know for sure I felt like I was stuck in like a dating pattern of doing kind of the same relationships over and over again mm -hmm. and I was ready to figure out like what that was and how to shift that so that I didn't reenact the same pattern again and I had known you from a mastermind we were both in and I knew I really loved how I felt around you and I trusted you to like lead and guide me in that process so that's kind of how it came to be it was like I know I really want to work on this and I don't think I can do it on my own anymore because I've tried coaching myself for a while on it. Mm -hmm. um, and I just really want to work with Diana. Yeah, yeah. It was, I remember when I saw that come through, I was like, oh, um, yeah, it's also such an honor for me to coach women who are coaches as well, just because it's like, ah, like it's so satisfying. Not, not that somebody has to be a coach, but like just that yeah. there's also your own access to your own wisdom is so fun. Mm -hmm. I like okay so if I if we go back to that space so the intention was really to break patterns like how did you find the experience of where do I want to go because there's there was you in the program and then there's you after the program like mm -hmm. what are some of the things that maybe you even learned about yourself inside of the six months that you were then able to take after the program was done and continue the integration mm-hmm well, one of the big things was really, so I, human design had find, found me like a year before last year. So like two years ago now, but like when mm -hmm. I was considering joining your program, it had been a year. Mm -hmm. So I knew there was something about being a human design projector mm -hmm. that I wanted to learn, which also correlates really nicely with learning to balance my feminine and masculine energy a lot more. So I feel like that's something that I really learned in the program that I then was practicing after mm -hmm. was like balancing that and leaning back more. And then the other thing coming through that I feel like I really started practicing in the program was really, I knew what I wanted or knew what I wanted to do even like microscopically, like yeah. maybe this person wasn't, I don't want to go on a second date with them or something like that, but really being able to communicate that and <laughs> process all of the emotion coming up when I know what I want to do next. And even though there's conflict, I feel like that really helped in the program, especially like having your like actual feedback on like, how do I even say this when I like can't come up with how to say it, but I know I need to say it. I feel like that then gave me some frameworks or even like scripts to go off of then 
even when I wasn't in the program, so I could continue to actually act in alignment with what I knew I actually wanted. Mm -hmm. So that was really cool. And I'm still like that this fall actually has been like a huge thing in my life where I'm having lots of like expressing what I really want when it's not what the other people want or what their aligns with their opinions. That's been like a huge learning lesson for me. And I think we really laid like the groundwork for that in School of Love. Mm, I love that. I remember that. That was actually one of the things that was coming to me. I was like, I remember like your throat, like, yes. <laughs> like accessing the no and claiming the no mm -hmm. and like feeling like learning to feel safe in the no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I honestly, I know that like people watching this can relate to that fear, whether it's in dating or it's with friends or it's with coworkers or a boss, like the, the, the safety that it asks like to, to ground in this is just a no for me mm -hmm. and yeah and not needing to like over explain myself too not needing to over explain yourself is so huge um and we do that we do that a lot like we and just also that that conciseness and that clarity is so powerful and in so many ways so kind right mm -hmm. to just not leave room for like maybe this could be because when i really know it, it isn't mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i really like that how did you find like for you personally because everybody you know everybody's journey with this is so different but to like have the support of being in the group and then have the support kind of accessible to you whenever whenever you needed it mm -hmm. that like, was super helpful because like sometimes you're just like especially since I was going out and putting myself on a dating app and dating and there there's a lot unfolding in between like actual sessions and you're like right now I need support when I need to reply to this person like yes. I can't wait till the next session yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I found it like super critical and important and I would have found it really sad if I had to like wait until the next session or like here's what I ended up doing but like we couldn't interrupt my patterns like real time if yeah. we didn't have the between session support. Yeah. yeah. And like something that I, I couldn't agree more. I think it's absolutely necessary, especially when we are interrupting patterns. Mm -hmm. And also the experience for me too, when I'm in a space where I'm like deeply held in my process, it's so amazing. And I'd be curious to hear, like genuinely curious to hear your um, take on, let's say, having my approach and my response and then having Eleni and we both came, mm -hmm. Eleni is a support coach for this group, coming mm -hmm. from like pretty, like this same essence, but different delivery. Mm -hmm. And like, how did you find that dynamic? I thought it was like, it was good and interesting to like see different people's approaches. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um that are still supporting like the same framework so mm -hmm. i bet people like different clients of yours maybe like align more with like eleni's approach than with your approach or vice versa like mm -hmm. i always found like the way that you described things landed with me mm -hmm. but i also could see it from eleni's side as well yeah. so yeah. i really yeah. appreciated the like contrast of both and yeah. i'm sure someone different from me would like that as well yeah, there, it's a very, it's a different approach, right? It, it mm -hmm. definitely is. Um, where do I want to go from here? I really want to like tap into what feels so real. Okay, well, since then, some things have happened. Some, some things, yeah. have, some big things have happened. So you've met, you've met someone. Um, mm -hmm. He's your partner, right? Mm -hmm. And you guys mm -hmm. are living together, which is huge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like to whatever extent you feel open, if you can share with us, like kind of how that transpired and, and also like what feels different this time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm, yeah, I'm super excited about it. And just so many different things about like our relationship and about him were like things coming through that I like was manifesting, but I didn't know, like I was manifesting it through him. Like for example, at the beginning of the year, I knew I was getting ready to have pets and I thought I was going to have kittens, yeah. <laughs> but I ended up with, and they're like in here right now sleeping, but I ended up with, um, he has a golden retriever, which I've always wanted a golden retriever. 
but I've always thought like I couldn't have one because they shed too much and like blah, blah, blah. so he has one already though and then he also um was co-raising we only have him for one more week but uh, a golden slash lab for guide dogs for the blind so two dogs that entered my life that I didn't know were going to enter my life through this way so that was just like so fun but yeah. okay so how I met him yeah um was on so we had figured out especially because I was working on balancing more into my feminine and being a human design projector we had kind of collaborated and figured out that being on like Bumble where the female initiates might not be as supportive to me and what I was practicing. Mm -hmm. So we had, I was just on Hinge. So I was on Hinge and we were, we ended up matching, I think like on a Sunday or something. And he had responded to something like quirky I had in my profile mm -hmm. about grammar or something like that. And he made like a joke to that. And so he initiated which was what I was looking for. I wasn't initiating. I was just like completely mm -hmm. sitting back on hinge and letting all the things come to me. Yeah. Yeah. And then I was sorting through them and in, uh, mm -hmm. intuitively. So, and then on a Monday we were messaging mm -hmm. and um, it was going really well and flowing really well. Mm -hmm. And then I ended up it's funny. He, we just met his brother last week and he reminded me that I like broke all my rules with him like the first week, <laughs> which is true. I did. I like broke all the quote unquote dating rules, but it ended up feeling like so different that I just felt okay to do that. Yeah. So one of them was I normally wouldn't give my number to somebody until I met them in real yeah. life, yeah. but I did give him my number after we had yeah. messaged. So then we were like texting on a Tuesday. Then on Wednesday, we were messaging and he initiated asking me to meet in person, mm -hmm. which was awesome because I wanted them to initiate that in mm -hmm. my like leaning back more. Mm -hmm. But he asked me out for dinner that night on Wednesday when we were messaging. Yeah. And so that broke like two of my rules. Yeah. So one of them was don't go on to dinner on a first date. <laughs> and second one was don't go same day request yeah. on a date. But I just felt like it was flowing really well. And I had time that day. And what's really, really funny is that day, I had felt intuitively um, like I was supposed to get a consult for freezing my eggs. Maybe you remember this. So I got a consult that day, the day that I ended up meeting him. And in the console, it was like completely like intuitive no in my body that like I was not supposed to freeze my eggs. And my mind was like, oh, no. this makes no sense. Like you're getting older, you need to freeze your eggs, blah, blah. But it was a total no. But then that night I went to dinner with him and I was like, oh, maybe, even if it's not him, but like maybe something will end up flowing that shows me why. I wasn't supposed to first time. Oh my God. Isn't that so crazy? Oh, whoa. Okay. So then, yeah. I feel like you, yeah, keep going. I feel like you hit on some okay. things. Like we could do a whole masterclass of some of the things you just I said. know. <laughs> <laughs> so then we went on a first date. The good thing yeah. is where we went on the first date is where yeah. my friend would call was Elsie's office because I basically took all my first dates to the same location because I felt safe there and I knew it. I like knew the bartenders, <laughs> like everything. <laughs> so uh, we went there for dinner and we had like a really great dinner and he like walked me to my car um, and just gave me like a very casual hug and like didn't, you know, nothing else. And it was really great. Um, and then we had arranged, oh, he had talked about how he didn't want like normal gender roles in the relationship. So I decided I would, ask him out for a second date then so i asked him out for saturday to go on a hike but then we ended up talking so much like on thursday and then we were talking on friday he asked me if i wanted to go to dave and buster's which is like a place where you can play games and stuff mm -hmm. <laughs> so we ended up like the day before we were supposed to have our second date we went on our second date and we like played games i was so bad at all the games. He beat me at everything except for Connect Four. <laughs> and then we went to dinner after that and had like dinner and drinks. Um, and it was just like really nice and spontaneous. And then he held my hand and like walked me into my car, which was so cool because 
I hadn't had that like in a progression in a relationship in a long time where like hand holding was like the natural next step. So that was really sweet. Mm-hmm. And then the next day we still went on our like second yeah. date, we ended up being our third date, like hike. Yeah. We basically ended up spending the whole weekend together. Mm-hmm. And like from there, it just like kept going mm-hmm. from there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that there is something to say about, so we talk about the slow burn, but then there's something to say about. <laughs> I'm like, I did really badly. <laughs> it wasn't the slow burn. That yeah. being said, to, I think there are a couple things to bring up. Is like sometimes we meet someone at a point in our life where the time, there's so much momentum behind the timing that we, we, we just know that. And what I know about you, and I think that anybody watching this, like to use their own discernment is like, Lauren, you're particularly in tune with your intuition. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like you are you are you're deeply in tune with your intuition I know we all have moments where we're not in tune and we can't quite hear it and we don't know how to access it but like I would say from what I know about you in the larger part of your life you know how to access that place so mm-hmm. like that was one of the things I wrote here like intuitively like there was like and mm-hmm. I also the whole thing about your dating profile like saying something quirky Mm-hmm. in your profile or something that could like because maybe somebody isn't quirky but something that someone can pick up on that's interesting and respond to and respond to it and actually sh- and actually display that they actually took the time to read your yeah and not just look at that your picture huge. Yeah. yeah and actually like and, and actually you know initiate a conversation based on something interesting rather than hey how mm-hmm. are you um mm-hmm. so that's something I always recommend and then this process of Sifting through intuitively. Mm -hmm. So for you, I think intuitively makes a lot of sense. Maybe for someone else watching, another way could be like, look at their eyes, look at their smile. What do you actually sense in this Mm -hmm. person that you're looking at? So I just wanted to touch on that so briefly. Yeah, and there's, oh, go ahead. No, 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 go for it. No. I was going to say, there are also like really cool things like that first weekend we spent together, he Mm -hmm. said it was really important to me that he met or I met his friends early on and that they liked me. So like that Sunday I went to CrossFit because he's very into CrossFit, went to CrossFit with him and like met his friends and ended up meeting one of his best friend's wife. Mm -hmm. She ended up being the one that made his profile for him. (laughs) She like pulled all the pictures and like asked him the questions that she like typed in from like interviewing him. (laughs) So, and that was really good to like meet actual people in his life really early on. And that that was important to him was cool too. Yeah, Yeah. it was really cool. And I think it also goes to show that when we talk about things like the slow burn or whatever we talk about, they are guiding principles and at the Mm -hmm. end of the day there's no one path Mm -hmm. and being connected to your intuition and what like genuinely like not even genuinely isn't the word what like deeply feels true for you is what matters the most Mm -hmm. and I love that and I think it's important to point out I mean for the human design nerds out there that I'm a splenic authority. So it's yes. very in the moment and can look very quick. And yes. he's a sacral generator. So it yes. also so can quick. look very quick. Yes. So the two of those together, like if we're both tapped in yes. to our intuition, it can look to the outsider as yes. a much quicker process than an emotional authority or something yes. else. Yeah. Yes. I love that. Actually, that was a piece I wanted to touch on for those who don't know when Lauren mentioned being a projector projectors are many things besides this one thing I'm going to say but it's specific to dating it's like or in general like like to to be invited right and to Mm -hmm. wait for the invitation that's why Lauren was Mm -hmm. touching on like leaning back and taking a really Mm -hmm. lean back approach and letting someone come to her and that's Mm -hmm. one of the things too is like looking at that and saying well then Bumble wouldn't be the space for you because Bumble is where you're going to do all the initiating and that doesn't align doesn't lie with your it business. never worked for me because that's it how does. I would get in that same pattern was like I was the one driving the relationship and yeah. because I waited for this one like he ended up being the one to like ask me to be his girlfriend and yeah. then he was the one that was like telling you know recognizing me for all these amazing things and how much he really wanted me to move in and like so it really was then how the tone of the relationship was set for the yeah. whole thing yeah, yeah. Yeah, I love that. Um, I guess I'll just leave it so we I don't take too much of your time. Like, is there anything you want to say about 
just the whole inner circle experience, um, anything that you are taking with you still that you're finding yourself integrating, just any final words. Mm. I mean, even like the conscious communication stuff and like other things that we learned in the program that are just great to integrate into relationship as a whole, like, and noticing even my patterns now, like in relationship, I'm like practicing having more awareness for, you know, reenacting them and breaking those patterns and noticing when my mind's making up a story versus like what's actually happening. And a lot of the tools we learned now like apply to the actual relationship not just the dating process it's so true they really do translate over mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I yeah. love you. thank you so much for sharing i really thank appreciate you it. for having me so oh. fun. all right you can stay on we'll say bye to facebook <laughs> <laughs> bye facebook <laughs> okay.